I've come to India to explore a religion that believes we all have the mental power to perform miracles. This is the Mahabodhi Temple in Bodh Gaya. According to Buddhist tradition, 2,500 years ago, a man named Siddhartha Gautama came to the realization that the human mind had immense untapped powers. In doing so, he founded an entirely new religion, Buddhism. And tradition says he did it right here under this tree. I want to understand what Buddhists believe happened to Siddhartha as he sat under the tree. Tibetan monk Losang Tenpa has promised to help me find out. So, that I'm, I'm down, glad right? you could come. Oh, me too. Uh, I am so too. this is our holiest spot where the Buddha attained awakening. Losang tells me he'll get me to understand the miracle of the Buddha's enlightenment and he'll do it by challenging my mind to get me to see the light myself. So what do you know about? What do you know so about Lord Buddha? Mean, uh, what do they well, teach you in America? Uh, I learned that he was of noble birth, yeah, and uh, he grew up very, very sheltered, and he said that. And then one day he wandered out of the compound. That's right. And began to see the life world. as it really was. Yep. Why, why, why did he do that? That's the question you're going to answer. Well, how would you like it if your father had decided as soon as you were born that this baby of mine is going to be the king? So I've got to keep him in this palace surrounded by beautiful sense objects, Sounds flowers perfect. that never droop, beautiful young ladies Sounds who never good. look old. Sounds perfect. Isn't that perfect? It yeah. Sounds, but sounds this guy wasn't good. satisfied with that. Buddha left the palace, right? Yes. And do you know what he saw when he left the palace? Well, uh, as I understand it, he, he saw suffering. He saw real life. In what was, form? In what form? Well, there were old people, cripples, yeah. uh, beggars, yeah. people who had nothing, people who were hungry. Yeah, it's the like a, person, it's like so an eye opener. It's eye like a wow. He saw death. Yeah. His oh, father, death his father didn't want him to see death. It made him think so strongly. He felt, I've got to leave this place I've, I've and find out what is the cause of this. Why do people suffer? Siddhartha roamed for six years, seeking to understand the cause of suffering, until he finally came to the shade of a ficus tree and decided that he would stay right on that spot, focusing his mind until he discovered how to end human suffering. After sitting motionless for an entire night, Siddhartha achieved a mental transformation. Buddhists say he became the Buddha, the enlightened one. Taught us, he said, you know what a good doctor would tell a patient. Man, you're sick. You're sick. You're suffering. You know, you have a problem. Second, I know the cause. Basically, this craving, attachment. The Buddha realized that by letting go of his desires, and his attachment to the material world, he could rid himself of suffering. For the Buddha, and for generations of Buddhists after him, this freedom from attachment seems to allow a remarkable, perhaps even miraculous, mental and physical focus. You know, he was so grateful to this tree under which he'd sat and achieved this amazing realization. He sat in this area for seven weeks, and for one of those weeks, just gazing Unwinkingly, they say. Unmoving and unblinking for seven days. Uh, it's possible, why not? We haven't exercised our minds. We're so busy with external things, buying and selling and doing all the things I mean, we you've do. Have never actually seen a yogi in, yeah. in action? Well, in a sense, it's an amazing thing, but you and I can do it. For Buddhist years of mental training, and showing love and compassion to others can free them from suffering. Walking around this temple, you feel like a miracle really could happen. 
the miracle of people being content with their lives, people getting along together. Do you want to just come and see how a Tibetan Lama teaches Western students? Sure. How are you? I am well. How are you, sir? Very good. I saw your movie. Oh, you did? Which one? <laughs> I don't know. Who else likes my movie? <laughs> Bravo. Shortcut. We all need to care and love and respect each other. That is the source of happiness. Whoever has that, their journey is good. Whoever not keep this in their heart, journey is not good. Thank you. From today, you are my friend. <laughs> where, where? <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you. I like you. I like you. <laughs> so, a lot of religions are pretty much miracle based. I mean, Christianity, Judaism. Right. Really. Right. Uh, you don't do miracles? But what's a miracle? I mean, flying in the sky, is that a miracle? It Birds is, do it. It is, it Birds is. It. But we normally think of miracles as some sort of divine thing, something that, okay. that gives us proof of God or something, you know. Okay, so that we could ask, where's God? You ask the mystics or the yogis, where's God? They'll, they'll point here, they won't point up there. They'll say it's in here. So then, if you're being inspired by your inner God, Buddha, Christ, you know, Krishna, whatever you want to call it, maybe then you can perform what's called a miracle. What does this world need the most? It needs healing, right? Love. It needs uh, reconciliation. I think that's a miracle, and that's the miracle we need. We don't need people levitating three inches off their butt, you know, while meditating. That's stupid. Right so right. let's stick to the real miracle, which is to transform the human mind, really. All right. You know what you just did? What? You solved the problem of miracles. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Could walk up. <laughs> nice. uh, you were all right in my book. It's ironic. That a man who wanted us to tap into the power that we all have within ourselves is thought of as some sort of divine being. The point of Buddhism, as far as I can see, is to teach us that we are all capable of much more than we might believe we are. We just concentrate on it, just put our minds to it. I used to struggle to make sense of miracle stories. How oceans could be parted. How it was possible to walk on water. But I think I was missing the point. To believe in miracles is to believe there is more to life than meets the eye. To accept there could be something that connects us, unites us. So many souls pass through this world and as our paths cross, miraculous things can and do happen. People get the breaks they always wanted. People inspire one another. People fall in love. And whether these events are orchestrated by the hand of God, the power of the mind, or just a one in a million chance, I believe we should believe in miracles. Because miracles, however you define them, help us to, well, they give us hope. They drive us to create reality out of possibility.